All day long, Martha Raddatz has been gathering details on the 40 minutes that changed history and tells us some of those key moments are different than we first thought. The operation was called Neptune Spear, the mission to capture or kill bin Laden. But we learned today that the mission didn't quite go down as initially described. As the 25-man assault team landed in stealth-configured helicopters and spread throughout the darkened compound, gunfire quickly erupted and was sustained through the 40-minute operation, even as the SEALs climbed the stairs to the third floor. But when they came face to face with bin Laden, we learned for the first time today that the resistance that the White House had said bin Laden put up did not include a weapon. He was not armed is what I understand to be true. Officials said today the resistance came from bin Laden's wife. First they said she had been used as a human shield. Today they say she made a threatening move. She was not armed either, but was shot in the leg. Bin Laden was hit above the left eye and through the chest. The authority here was to uh, kill Bin Laden. And uh, obviously under the rules of engagement, if, uh, if he had in fact thrown up his hands, surrendered, uh, and didn't appear to be represent any kind of threat, then uh, they were to capture him. But they had full authority to kill him. Weapon or not, the SEALs in that split second had no way of knowing whether bin Laden was wearing a suicide vest or whether the room was booby-trapped. The SEALs always planned for the worst-case scenario. And tonight, the computer drives and DVDs the SEALs were able to grab from the compound are being described as a mother load of information. The material was flown to Washington, where copies were sent to the CIA and FBI. A copy was also left in Afghanistan. Analysts are combing through all of it, although it is all, of course, in Arabic, so it could take time. And sources familiar with the government's investigation tell ABC News that investigators are also looking into the two owners of the compound who were in the money-changing business in the hopes it may lead them to sources of al-Qaeda's financing.